Alright, it's been a couple weeks now, rocking the iPhone 11, which I technically never really used in the past, but this is a 2019 iPhone, which I'm sure a lot of people are using phones from around that year, maybe earlier. So I thought I'd kind of recap my experience of using the 6.1 inch phone and why I don't like the 6.1 inch size. Let's begin. So yeah, okay, now that I have used smaller phones for a while, I'm starting to get more and more annoyed by the largeness of the smartphone market these days. Everyone just wants to go big. Even Apple, like, is getting rid of the mini iPhone next month, which I'm disappointed by, but I should at least be grateful that the iPhone 11 still has the rounded chassis design, and after using squared off iPhones for a while, and now going back to the older ones with the rounded chassis, I'm starting to realize that this is far more comfortable, like, it doesn't cut into your hand as much and I don't feel like my hand gets tired or strained as easily as it did back when I was using a 13 Pro Max. Much sharper edges, way heavier, way bigger of a phone. And yes, there's advantages that come with bigger phones like better cameras, better battery lives, but I think what I've just kind of realized after downgrading to older phones so many times now is that a lot of us just use our phones for the basics. Even a techie guy like me is spending most of his time on his phone like checking email, texting, browsing Twitter, managing bank apps and all phones these days can kind of cover those basics really really well and the only edge cases I was bumping up against back when I was using the iPhone 10 was like limitations of the A11 chip because I do use my phone for work I do make a lot of video thumbnails with it and I will admit now with the iPhone 11 it has been a tad more convenient when I'm making video thumbnails to have much more screen real estate whenever I'm assembling text with pictures and backgrounds and everything I use an app called GoDaddy Studio and yeah I could get by with it on the iPhone SE 2. It got the job done, but on a 4.7 inch display, it was a little bit constricting. And now that I have a larger screen, it feels kind of like I've made it full circle, to be honest with you. Like this doesn't honestly feel all that different of an experience from my 13 Pro Max, because I guess I've used smaller phones now and I went back to having the home button for a while. And now that I've gone back to having Face ID, I'm reminded, yes, I love Face ID. And yes, gesture control is so much more satisfying and so much more fluid. And ultimately we spent a lot of time arguing about which phone size is best. Like, I want the biggest possible screen, and I want the smallest possible screen. And what I've realized is that most people, depending on the size of the screen, they will just hold it at a different distance, you know? Like adjusting the screen size in Vision OS. You're gonna pinch and move it back and move it forward. We kind of already do that with our arms, you know? Smaller phones you'll hold closer, bigger phones you'll hold further away. Holding closer is probably not that great for your eyes. I guess my eyes are already screwed up. Even after arguing and advocating so much for 120 hertz promotion and still having it on my MacBook Pro, by the way, I have totally gotten comfortable and used to the concept of having 60 hertz and hopefully not letting it bother me anymore. I used to be a real stickler about that, but you know, my Apple Watch is 60 hertz anyway, and so many screens in our lives are capped at 60 hertz by now, so it took some therapy. It was not easy. It took several months to convince my eyes that it was okay to look at a display that was not 120 hertz, and thankfully, I have done it. Now, this just feels gorgeous, and I'm reminded how little I care about OLED, actually. Like, the iPhone 10 has a gorgeous display, don't get me wrong, but when I switched to the SE2, the most noticeable thing about that screen was how much smaller it was and square. You know, it wasn't all rounded in the corners anymore, but it wasn't so much the LCD. I feel like maybe if you watch a lot of YouTube videos in full screen, that comes up more, but I typically don't. When I watch YouTube videos, I will fill the entire display and pinch in a little bit, or I'll be doing picture in picture, in which case having those black pixels go all the way off doesn't come up a lot, and yes, it's much more noticeable if you do an OLED side by side with an LCD, but truly the liquid retina display, even though Apple doesn't really make these anymore, it's still gorgeous. Like it still looks wonderful and I still catch myself like admiring the design of the iPhone from time to time. I still kind of miss this notch. I've realized that it cuts in less on content than the newer iPhone 13 and 14 notches, which are narrower, but they cut in deeper into content and even more so with the dynamic island. So honestly, like it just feels proportional like, I understand why this is the go-to 6.1 inch screen size that everybody is so comfortable with because it's like right in the middle, which is not really in my character. I switched to this phone because it was the most convenient for the family, but I've grown to appreciate how like, okay, it's not too small and it's not too big. This is what most people choose. Like my cousin is still rocking an iPhone 11 as well. And one thing that I've really appreciated about both the SE2 and this phone is the aluminum chassis. A lot of people prefer that glossy stainless steel 
feel on the edges, but I hate how much oils and fingerprints and smudges it collects. I feel like I'm constantly cleaning it, whereas this, it's kind of like inversed. I'm not worried about the aluminum chassis, but I am always trying to clean the glossy glass on the back, which was not a problem back in the 13 Pro Max days, or even on the SE2, when you have white glass, it tends to cover up those oils and smudges a lot better. But in terms of like day-to-day -day use of the phone, I absolutely noticed the superior battery life. In fact, because I got so used to the crappy battery on my SE2 and my screen on time is not incredibly high anymore, maybe because I'm traveling and I'm visiting family and stuff, but like I will sometimes get done with the day and it's pretty late. And I'm like, oh, what's my phone battery at? And it's like 80%. And this is not even like relatively speaking that amazing of a battery life anymore. Most of you guys love talking about 11 Pro Max battery life or 13 Pro Max battery life, 14 Pro Max. Those are the battery champions in the smartphone world. This one is probably about the same battery life as say a 13 mini, which a lot of people complained had a bad battery life. And I'm just like not even getting through half of this thing in the day. Maybe it's because I just don't use Siri. It's probably wasting more battery than you realize. But probably the biggest upgrade by far between me going back to the iPhone 10 for a while and then the SE2 has got to be this camera. Like, oh my God, I forgot how insanely good cameras were from even four years ago. Like, yes, I'm sure they got much better with the 12, 13, and 14 series, but I still take videos and pictures with this thing that absolutely amaze me. I'm just like, dang, they look so sharp. I can lift subjects right out of those pictures and use them in thumbnails, and it's great for selfies. I love that I finally have that ultra-wide front-facing camera again. I really did miss that a lot on the iPhone 10 and SE2. It's like, oh, we can't all fit in the picture. Let me just turn the phone to the side and boom, it zooms out. And I haven't used the ultra-wide on the back all that much. Honestly, I could still probably get by without it. I'm mostly referring to the main sensor. I guess maybe my eyes were tortured, I guess. What's the opposite of spoiled? Like they, they were brutally assaulted all the time with the terrible camera quality of the iPhone 10 and SE2. I still thought they were fine. I did a ton of videos using those iPhones as my main cameras while I was traveling. And I thought it did fine. Like it got the job done and they were high resolution and high frame rate and everything. But I think what the iPhone 11 has reminded me is that that's what you should stop focusing so much on. It's not so much about the resolution in the frame rate. It all comes down to just how good is the sensor. And you can actually capture really amazing videos and pictures, even with just a 1080p resolution or 30 frames a second, as long as you have an amazing lens and sensor that's capturing all of that data, resolution and frame rate can kind of just somewhat get in the way. You know, if you've got the internet and computational performance to handle it on your computer, sure. Having 4K at 60 FPS, it doesn't hurt anything. It's not like it makes the quality worse by any means, but it does fill up your storage a lot faster. And this is a 64 gigabyte iPhone. So I've actually more recently been switching all of my video recordings to 1080p at 60 because that saves space compared to 4K. And honestly, like I've sent videos to people, I've uploaded vlogs and I haven't noticed a massive difference. Like the camera quality is still just really, really incredible and I'm happy with it. And I've discovered that maybe I've been dwelling too much on the resolution and I should just focus much more on the light and how it is captured in this amazing lens setup. Ultrawide is still kind of nice to have, but it's so much softer and there's still a lot of pixelation on the sides. And honestly, back when I reviewed the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I still kind of got that vibe whenever I switched to the ultrawide lens. It's not that it's a bad camera per se, it's just that the main lens always looks so much sharper and more vivid that I never want to use the ultrawide lens because I know it's just going to look so much more compromised. I'm still honestly not a fan of this camera bump design though. This totally looks like something that was, I guess, to keep it more consistent with the 11 Pro series with the stovetop camera bump. And it's funny to me that in 2019, Apple came up with that camera bump design. And in 2023, we're coming up on four years later, they're still probably going to be using that same old triple camera design bump on the back. It's only gotten bigger and thicker and everything, but I've honestly never been a fan of it. It increases the amount of camera wobble and I would personally rather the phone just get thicker on the back or at least turn the camera bump into a visor pixel style so we can eliminate that wobble. But I guess we're not allowed to say anything nice about the pixel on this channel, right? Because I'm Talos of Tech, which means my opinions are not allowed to change. But overall, I just want to remind people that honestly, once you switch phones, even if you're downgrading and stuff, it becomes very, very easy to get adjusted to a different size, a different screen. Like, no, this was not my first choice. This wasn't exactly the phone I wanted to use, but I've gotten adjusted to it and now I'm quite comfortable with it and I've learned to appreciate it. Like, wow, I got a phone that's really affordable now. You can find them on eBay for 
for probably under $300 if you look for a while, and you get an all-day battery life, you get a fantastic camera, and you get a chip that is still getting iOS 17 updates. I've been running the beta on here, and it's been slightly buggy here and there, but for the most part pretty stable. It's still gaining new features, it has a great sound system, it's water resistant, and because it was so convenient for the rest of my family to switch to different phones, and they just said, well, no one really wants the iPhone 11, Drew, so can you use the iPhone 11? I kind of want to encourage people to not constantly be looking for a purchase to be a solution. I think that's a dangerous thing that the tech community sets as a precedent is all the time we're just like oh well you know what you need you need to go out and buy this go out and buy this and buy that and the truth is i think what is better for also the environment and also just our well-being is trying to get comfortable with less and just trying to trying to make use of what you already have and try to be comfortable with what you have and a lot of the time in the tech community because we watch so many videos on phones it's easy to just get bored and feel like ah, i should just upgrade because i'm kind of bored of my phone i want something kind of new and you can can get yourself in a lot of debt or not make the most responsible financial decisions by just getting bored and truthfully what you probably need is just take your case off change your wallpaper and then go watch the apple event of that iphone generation you have and you'll start to appreciate it again you'll be like wow apple really put a lot of work into this design and they made it look really really cool and if you update your wallpaper a bit or swap out your case or something it'll feel fresh and new and you won't have to drop like hundreds of dollars or maybe thousands if you're planning on getting a higher storage configuration. So yeah, like I totally could go out and buy an iPhone 13 mini and I would probably appreciate that more because it's smaller and it'll have a better camera and it'll have a better display and all kinds of advantages that I'm sure I could list for you here today, but I don't like necessarily the message that sends that you shouldn't be happy with what you have or the idea that the older tech is just so unusable, it's so old that you shouldn't even consider it anymore. Like get rid of that old iPhone, you need a new one because on Honestly, there's new iPhones always coming around the corner and the longer you wait, the better deal you're potentially going to get. I understand there's a certain point where you have to make the upgrade. Either the phone's not working anymore or it's damaged or you're using it for work or something and that one camera feature or that great battery life is what unlocks the use case that is needed for your work. But I'm okay considering that's the exception because if there's people out there on the fence about buying new tech that's just for fun but they don't necessarily need it, then I would rather make sure that the people who are buying it for fun or are buying it for work are absolutely certain that it's the right decision for them, not just buying it because, well, it's a fun toy and I'm kind of bored with my old phone. Like, I think there's a beauty and value in appreciating something that you know you could replace for very affordably and you know it's been around for a while. Like, it's not a brand new latest and greatest this or that, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. So, as of right now, I still fully intend on using my iPhone 11 until something is wrong with it, but again, I'm not making it any promises because I've made those in the past and I couldn't keep them. There's a chance the iPhone 15 could come out and I decide, wow, I really need that one feature for work or something. Honestly, though, at this point, I feel very unlikely that I would ever buy and keep a brand new iPhone because if I'm not in a rush, I can just wait six months and get it probably for way cheaper. And I think as phones become more iterative and there's less and less differences year over year, we should consider the used market a lot more than we have in the past. Similar to cars, you don't always feel the pressure to buy a brand new car because you can buy one from two or three years ago. Barely any different and save like half the price. Use what you got and this is what I got and I've learned to appreciate it and be happy with it. And I hope you guys can do something similar with your older tech. So let me know what iPhones you're rocking down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you all in the next one.